Awesome. Thank you so much, Ellen. Um, and thank you everybody for being here this morning. So, um, so my presentation on presentations today, very meta, um, is informed by my experience teaching two sections of WR 151 this spring. Um, 151 belongs to a cluster of small seminars that the CAS writing program offers to teach foundational academic research and writing skills. Um, and 151 also includes multiple presentation assignments that help students develop public speaking skills while they complete an independent research and writing project. Um, and just uh, it will be relevant relevant later. My sections were on American Gothic tales, um, a topic that actually turned out to be eerily relevant to our lived experiences this spring. Um, so I wanted to begin, if we can go to my first slide, um, just by acknowledging that even under ordinary circumstances, presentations pose uh, many challenges. First and foremost, students consistently articulate fears about public speaking. Um, of course, many students also experience writer's block or test taking anxiety as well. But in my experience, at least papers and exams don't seem to cause quite the same anticipatory stress um, quite as pervasively as presentations do. Um, these assignments are even more intimidating because we're typically asking students to present on material that they, they're still learning and have had just a few weeks to master. Um, presentations also involve technical and logistical challenges for instructors. And in addition, I just kind of believe that public speaking skills are fundamentally difficult to teach. Um, you know, we can explain them and model them as much as we want, but I think what makes one person's unique style of communication engaging or genuine might not necessarily work for someone else. So I begin with this list of challenges because I found that almost all of them were magnified by remote teaching, and I can go into a little more detail about that later if that's helpful. Um, yet, despite this bleak picture that I have just painted, um, I also found that there are some really unique opportunities that arose when we did have to conduct our in-class presentations online. Um, if we can go to the next slide, that would be great. Um, I had to radically reconsider what types of assignments I developed um, and really what I wanted my students to learn while completing these assignments. So as I revised my assignments, I was guided by these three questions. Um, what is the purpose of asking my students to deliver this presentation? Who do I want them to envision as their audience? And then what strategies are going to work best for them to convey their ideas effectively in light of that purpose and that audience. So I found myself really returning to these questions over and over again as I was paring down my original assignments so that I wouldn't lose sight of the learning objectives that I had in mind. Um, and I'll just speak a bit now to how I did that with two different assignments. Um, so as my syllabus was originally written right after returning from spring break, my students were going to deliver work in progress presentations accompanied by slides about their research and writing that they were doing on a gothic tale of their choice. Um, because the second half of March was a blur of confusion and anxiety, um, I radically needed to reduce this assignment. Um, yet even as I did this, I didn't want to lose sight of the, the sort of the fundamental purpose, which was to help students start to develop confidence in their own ideas and to become comfortable speaking to an audience of academic colleagues and as, as their peers were in their class. So I realized that we could do this in a really simplified way if I broke my students into small groups that met independently, um, which I wound up arranging according to time zone as well as similarities in topic. Um, I cut the requirement entirely for presentations to include slides and I encouraged my students simply to talk about where they were in their research and writing process for a few minutes, even if they felt totally stuck or overwhelmed or their books were still locked in their dorm, whatever the circumstances, um, and then just get some encouragement and guidance from their peers and from me. So with this really minimalist approach that removed the audiovisual elements and also removed the added anxiety of speaking in front of a large group, um, I found that my students were actually able to engage in pretty sophisticated and supportive conversations about each other's work, even as they were navigating the bigger stresses of the pandemic. Um, and then so at the end of the semester, after completing their research papers, my students had a second presentation assignment. Um, I had originally envisioned this and in past classes pre pandemic had conducted this as a very sort of complex town hall style debate where students would petition to have their chosen Gothic texts included in our imaginary town library. Um, and this is a really cool assignment, but it was too challenging to try to facilitate over online learning, especially when we were also getting used to zoom and everything else. So I still I, I, I we decided I needed to change it, but I still really wanted my students to solidify their newfound knowledge um, and make sure that it was they were still presenting things effectively for a non academic audience. The goal was really to remediate it for a different audience. I also wanted them to have an opportunity to have a say in how their presentations were evaluated and also encourage them to reflect on how their learning went as the semester due to a close. So I revised the assignment to be a short presentation with basic slides that students could record in advance using any platform they wanted. Um, and I told them that their target audience was a bunch of college students who would be spending a lot of time at home in the coming months and might want some recommendations of Gothic media to, to check out to pass the time. We developed a set of grading guidelines as a class and then I coupled the assignment with a written reflection that asked students to consider how their research projects uh, informed their thinking and experience of living through a pandemic. 
So because students felt like they were collaborative and involved in kind of setting the stakes of the, for this assignment and talking to each other as peers, they actually were pretty enthusiastic about it. Um, they were very creative. I had one student who retold the classic uh, vampire tale Carmilla using emojis. I um, mean, they were pretty, they actually had a real sense of humor about it. They titled their presentations things like the picture of Dorian Gray, an absurd text for our absurd times, or Jane, Jane Eyre stuck inside just like us. Um, so by meeting my students where they were during the pandemic, I found that they were still able to meet the learning objectives that my class had, but to do what we were able to do it without them experiencing unreasonable pressure. So um, I hope some of these principles are helpful to you guys. And I'm looking forward to the Q&A if you have questions. Thank you so much.